ADDI A D D I E stands for Analyze, Design, Develop, Implement and Evaluate. ADDI is the instructional design framework for training content developers and you guessed it right, we are going to break the myth today. Hi, I am Prashant Uttekar, a learning enthusiast and you are listening to the Relearning Podcast. Where we have an expert and today it's Neeraj Deshpande to break down a few myths around ADDI. By going back to basics, this will help you and me to relearn. Neeraj is a senior learning and development professional with more than 25 years of experience in the field. He has worked on conceptualizing and effecting organizational development, leadership development interventions, strategic sales and consumer satisfaction development, learning and development processes, and building organizational capability. He has learned this and much more from the great Dr. Stephen Covey and many such industry stalwarts. Welcome to the show, Neeraj. Thanks. Thanks, Prashant. Happy to be here. Talking about Eddie. It, it is a framework that got invented in 1975 by Florida University and originally it was uh, invented to explain the processes involved in developing the military inter-service training to train yeah. individuals to do a particular job. And eventually sure. this model became very dynamic and interactive by mid 80s, right? Yeah. By the time it came to India, you know, ADI took its own, uh, actually not only India, by the time it came into corporate, it became uh, used only and only for projects, it only and only for training developments, right? Oh, so, oh. and that brings to the first question, Neeraj, why do we need to unlearn and relearn ADI? Or rather, what is it from ADI that needs to be relearned? Uh, well, very, very interesting question, Prashant, the, because uh, what my observation is and what I have been observing uh, all these years in uh, corporate life is that uh, typically people look at ADI as an instructional design model. You know, right. uh, if you ask any learning and development professional about his or her understanding about what ADI is all about, then uh, you will typically hear the words like either instructional design or content right. development or designing a program, you know, uh, right. so everything related to uh, a training program is what ADI is spoken about or rather that's the context in which people speak about right. uh, ADI. Uh, now, if you really look at it, if you go through uh, the model and the way in which it has evolved over a period of time, uh, ADI is rather the moment we limit it to instructional design or only content development part of it, then it, it, it's like, you know, uh, you are using a cannon to kill, a, kill an ant, you know, because ADI is far more or rather its scope. Uh, is far vast uh, than just instructional design. But because the I, moment you say, yes, but when I looked so. up the definition, it's it 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 actually is meant and pointed toward instructional design. Mm -hmm. Even even on the Wikipedia. Okay, maybe so. So that's what I am saying. Uh, that uh, this, how do I put it? I I can't call it misunderstanding, but I I can surely call it limited understanding. Perfect. of ID is uh, this limited understanding of ID is, is all pervasive. You right. know, this is not only in India. This is across the globe. Means I have spoken to international audiences. I have uh, spoken to various international symposiums and everywhere I have found that people carry the, this limited understanding about ID. Right. Now, if, if you really look at it, ID as a model, it's not an instructional design model. It is instructional system design model. Oh, yes. That's also something that they mentioned on Wikipedia. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's, it's, it's ISD, not ID. Correct. Correct. Okay. So uh, what happens typically is that, uh, okay, if I have to use a typical language of learning and development professional, then I would say that uh, ID or instructional system design, it is based on training needs analysis. Okay. Right. The Whereas, famous TNA. TNA. Absolutely. Right. Whereas if you look at ID, instructional design, it is based on needs assessment. Okay. okay. Now, uh, now you will ask me, what is the difference? In, I, uh, yes, thanks for analysis. that. Yes. Yes. I was about to get to that question. Yes. Right. So as far as needs assessment is concerned, what happens is that the focus is on a specific learning initiative. Okay. 
okay whereas when you do training needs analysis at that time you are not considering one of the training initiative you are looking at learning needs of the organization that analysis does not have any specific end in mind okay you know that means what what i mean is i am not deciding first that i want to do leadership training right and then on the when i have taken that decision that i want to do leadership training then on the basis of that decision then what in leadership training do i need to do right right so i have first very clearly established the boundary the paradigm is established that whatever that i want to do it is in the paradigm called as leadership development interesting so the boundaries are set right uh-huh. now within leadership development what are the needs that emerge that i start assessing that is the needs assessment part of it mm-hmm. okay whereas when i say that okay i am looking at the organization and i need to look at where all learning is needed for the people so that they can do their job or their work in a more effective and efficient fashion so uh-huh. at this point in time the moment i ask this kind of question i don't have any learning initiative in my mind correct right the canvas is open now right and now i am with an open mind i am going to the organization and i am checking what kind of learning needs that are there mm-hmm. and then so that entire process that blank canvas and then analyzing what is required that is what i would typically term as training needs analysis okay or tna or lna in, if i have to use the current prevalent language right uh, in uh, this domain then learning needs analysis interesting right? so so the so the basic differentiation is in needs assessment you have boundary set right so the focus is on specific learning initiative or initiatives right whereas in tna the focus on focus is on overall learning system design in the organization now you will ask me how can it be completely on the you know on the basis of rather how can the canvas be so open then anybody anybody can come and draw whatever on that canvas correct so because every canvas needs to have some kind of paradigm around it uh, right. so that people then in a structured fashion people can work within those parameters so for when when you look at that one aspect of organizational functioning which provides that kind of context to the training needs analysis part is your business goals okay see an organization every organization at the start of every performance year sets certain performance goals for itself correct right so those are organizational goals now those organizational goals get transferred to functional goals departmental goals then uh, the hod or head of that department's goals and then it percolates down to the individual goals right 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 so that's the entire process that needs to happen so the boundary that is there for tna is your business goals okay Uh, when when you look at your business goals i right. i usually tend to term them as business needs right right what right. is it that the business needs and if those are business needs then for for those needs what kind of job performance is needed from people mm-hmm. so business needs get percolated down to job performance needs right now if that is the job performance i need so as to achieve those business goals then what is where where is the organization when it comes to its performance okay so desired performance vis-a-vis the current performance both these aspects are looked at and right. from there emerge something called as learning needs fair enough right so once those organizational learning needs have emerged then those are contextualized as per the function so a sales function what right. do, uh, what do those learning needs mean for sales function similarly for hr similarly for finance similarly for accounts so on and so forth right right so that's how the 
learning needs for every function for every department that gets established and then based on that then individual needs are as, uh, analyzed right right so, so so that's the entire process of that analysis or training needs analysis part of it which you don't do in the needs assessment part in needs assessment you are very clear ki this is the uh, training that i am or this is the learning initiative that i am doing for this particular team or for this particular department and that's that's it right so the focus is limited and in tna the focus is uh, quite broad as compared to uh, the needs assessment part now actually this is the relearning that needs to happen yeah that adi adi is not supposed to be limited only to one of the learning initiative uh, adi is a model which takes care of your entire organizational learning needs not only one of the function or one of the program uh so th- basically what you explained just now is the first a of adi yes okay which is the analyze okay so i mean not everyone looks at analyze or lna as the analyze of adi they do analysis probably in similar or different fashions but uh, no one but, but then it, in this case the scope is much widened after this yes it is it is a wider scope uh, and every organization at the beginning of every performance year must undertake this activity which majority of organizations don't right so so what they should do what should happen and what actually happens there is a huge gap okay and that is where the need for relearning of adi model is all about interesting first learning as uh, as as a business objective it would be a challenge for you you being a consultant to so many organization and if you ask them to put a model what is challenge is ad- telling talking about adi is a challenge or making them understand would be a challenge in in your experience with so many corporates see uh, the challenge is uh, and uh, this is my observation again uh, whatever that i have observed with various organizations that i have worked as a consultant uh, is that quite often learning and development and hr are synonymous in in majority of organizations right, right. they they work quite hand in hand or uh, lnd department is a part of hr department as such correct now now what happens because of that is the entire approach and the entire uh, outlook towards the lnd activities is that of a support function uh most of the time yes correct right yeah. because most yeah. of the time most of the organizations hr operates as a support function never as a line function that is true yes isn't it yep. now now the moment uh, even lnd uh, starts looking at itself as a support function you know yep. uh, they will have to go by what the functions are saying uh, are my needs at all the times so a sales functional head will come and say that you need to do this or rather in my rather these are the learning needs i have uh, identified our people are lacking in key accounts management do some training uh, within an organization the learning and development function which is there it fails to go the extra mile in understanding the business needs because again in majority of organizations and i might sound little harsh over here but in majority of organizations majority of quote and quote lnd professionals are nothing but coordinators mm-hmm. sure so so how much do they actually understand of learning and development that also is a question that needs to be addressed yeah so from there actually if you look at from taking all these things into consideration when you start looking at adi becoming only a model with a limited scope and not doing justice to its potential there is nothing surprising in that mm i i i see where you're going with this yeah you sure so 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 that's that's about it you you need to have very clear understanding of what your function is what it's supposed to be doing 
so learning and development is not a school within the organization mm. right yeah. you are providing learning to people so that it helps them build their capability and that that developed capability helps the business and the organization to develop its business so what are some so, right questions that this learning and development manager should start asking first to himself and to the business units so my that's precisely what uh, i was saying and that actually is the first phase of adi model exactly yeah you no know, uh, the analysis phase yeah so and that phase is the foundation for any any learning plan or any training plan or whatever that you are creating for the entire organization uh-huh. so so some of the things that people need to focus on or people need to give more attention to now they start they should start asking questions about what is the desired business need or result that is expected out once that learning initiative has been commissioned what is the result that we are looking at interesting right um and if that is the business need uh, yeah. that uh, that has been expressed by whoever the uh, you know function or the person or the department is then second important question a learning and development professional needs to ask is is a learning process uh, rather will the learning process fulfill that business need mm, right because quite a number of times learning may not be the answer the answer may lie in uh, the structural aspects of the organization the answer may lie in strategic tweaking that needs to happen right learning may not be answer to each and everything you know as a, as a consultant i have come across a lot many times uh, hr professionals and lnd professionals telling me that you know um, we have observed that there is lack of ownership and engagement among our people right so to develop that ownership please we are looking at a training initiative <laughs> i will give you my team for two days i want them, I, yeah. i want them to be I, I want owning them to up develop ownership yeah yeah <laughs> i i right. heard that before yes and and uh, otherwise you know uh, we we want our people to be engaged very well so we <laughs> want to do a two day long program so that they they will become engaged now if i could engage people in two days time or if i could develop sense of ownership in them in two days time i would be a magician man <laughs> i i heard this one also so what is your take on something like i'll give you my team for 4 hours and uh, the team is completely demo- demotivated and i can Absolutely. give them to you tomorrow yes <laughs> i have i have come across this i have come across this and i i i have always said i'm sorry i can't do that <laughs> what is your go to response to the such a situation so the response is my, my first question is why why are people demotivated yeah why has motivation level gone down yeah so that question very rarely people ask to themselves it's Fine. very easy to yeah. identify a symptom you know yeah. this is identification of a symptom that people are demotivated but why are they demotivated There's so this that root cause yeah. needs to be identified and that is what the purpose of analysis phase is all about absolutely so no one is asking that right so this reminds right. me of the tarizami pe movie right bacche ko bukha raha hai no use kyu hai <laughs> nobody is asking that right. question right, right. and uh, maybe it's also because you are that pharmacist who is used to give that remedy medicine no is it also because of the habit both sides so that is that is one secondly i think everywhere if you look at look at it and i don't want to become philosophical about it but hmm. everywhere you look at it everyone wants a solution you know true. people don't want to think on their own true so people want someone to tell them how to think as well so yeah yeah that's the that's the thought degradation that has already happened to quite <laughs> an extent so uh if if it has to be changed then yeah. uh, at, at the business leadership level also uh the business leaders will need to take some uh, harsh decisions and they will be they will need to be ready to bear some kind of dip in the performance for some period of time okay but i am also sure 
that the kind of pressures that are there on business leadership nowadays, I I don't see anyone taking that kind of risk. True. And and that is where the, if you really look at it from a comprehensive learning being given to an employee so that the employee develops, yeah. right? Organizations focus on customized learning. Correct. The moment you say that I need customized learning for my people, you are actually limiting the scope of development of that individual. Because you, in effect, are t- telling the learning and development department or the agency with which you are working that I'm not looking at you uh, to provide my people how they should think. I right. want you to suggest certain solutions that people, the moment they get out of that training room, start implementing those solutions and they start getting results. So, so what I'm saying is whenever you are providing learning solution, ready-made solutions, what is happening is you are providing a fish to a hungry man. It surely is taking care of his hunger for that time. Sure. Who is about it, but nobody is giving a thought to a fact that instead of giving him a fish, you could actually teach him how to fish. Yeah, sure. Because if you teach how to fish, you will take care of his hunger for his lifetime. True. Yeah, so that is where I'm saying that, you know, ready-made solution and um, development based on certain principles. There is a huge difference okay. in that. I think where I, where I caught your drift is when you use the example. Look at the word in itself, customization. Right. Or another word that they use, tailor-made. Tailor-made, yes. What does it mean? What does it mean? It is very specific to that to measurement. Correct. To your needs. To, to your measurements, to your needs. So it is only... Now the moment it is... Uh, you know, limited to your requirements or your needs or your measurements, then it is only f- for that particular situation. So say, for example, you tailor a suit today based on today's measurement. Tomorrow right. you put on weight, that suit has gone for a waste. No? This is no way to talk about me on this video chat. Okay. And don't, don't do that. No, no. <laughs> I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't do that. No, I was I looking it. at the number of suits that were just, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, for me. So that's why. Uh, but you're absolutely right. So you, what you're saying is it is a constant exercise. If you do this. Yes. It's a constant yes. exercise. If, especially when, when you use the word customized, it's not, it's, it's for now it's good. It's not good for tomorrow, yeah. maybe. So for now and for today's problem. Fair enough. The more the problem changes, you again go through learning. This pandemic has been such a litmus test for this, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Sure. And because, because this has become pandemic, now what has happened is when everyone is looking at it in this fashion, right. that today's problem, solution for today's problem. Tomorrow's problem, solution for tomorrow's problem. Right mm. now, you need to take people through so much of learning yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah, in a yeah. way that then, uh, then you start looking at it. Right? Rather, we have to take them through this kind of learning initiative. Then price point becomes an issue. Everything else than the quality of that learning starts becoming an issue. Mm. Fair. So it, it all starts now. All, all these ills start entering. Because the first phase of ADI is not giving adequate, is not given adequate attention to. And that is the analysis part. Very interesting. So that's why actually a learning and development professional needs to ask and needs to persist with very few questions. The first is obviously the desired business need or result. What is the desire? If, if I have to take people through this kind of learning, what is the business need that it is going to satisfy? Okay, right. Right. Um, and whether learning is the right answer for that yeah, business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. Right. You, you think people are demotivated, don't do their training. <laughs> okay. Because then you are telling them that you not only are demotivated, but even your abilities are not up to the mark. And that's why you need to go through training. Yeah. And that, that we, we've seen this, right? We, we see these yeah, in a classroom at all times, in a training program at all times. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely.
Super. Now, and, if, uh, if people are de- if people are demotivated to do what they are being paid for, why do you think they will be motivated to uh, uh, undergo a training program? True. So, so those are the questions actually learning and development professional must ask. Uh, then once once you are clear in your mind that okay learning process might be uh, rather is an answer to, uh, for this business need then if a learning process needs to be put in place then what are the performance requirements that are there right. which will support the desired business uh, uh, outcome okay if you are if you are looking at some business outcome as a desired outcome so it might be revenue um, rather revenue growth it might be market development it might be cost control it, right. it, might, it might be risk mitigation whatever that might be right right but what are the performance requirements which will meet that business need so that is where you actually create the performance standard and then you evaluate uh, on the basis of that performance standard so if this is the kind of performance that is needed what what is it that it will rather what is required for that performance to be given so what kind of knowledge people need to have what kind of skills they need to have what kind of attitudinal and behavioral orientation that they needs to have, need to have the change needs to be monitored change needs to be gradually brought in pick, uh, in place and someone needs to keep an eye on that entire process whether whatever new learning that has been given to people whether people are doing accordingly or not someone needs to look at it so management needs to take that responsibility on themselves it's not the lnd person's job correct so typically in organizations you will find that the line manager's role is limited or the uh, line supervisors or the functional heads role is limited to sharing his business needs and his expectations etc etc right right after that he leaves it to the lnd professional or or an agency an outside agency to do their work and then he is not even aware of what kind of learning that is being given to people correct obviously obviously he cannot ask any kind of questions he can't monitor progress of people he can't uh, you know he can't guide his people according to whatever learning that has been given to them and then because it is not monitored instead of learning curve taking place forgetting curve takes place for the learner so true yeah he forgets it he obviously goes back to his old ways of doing it and the line manager or the functional head is free now to say that learning didn't make any impact it's always <laughs> stopped learning. yes it's it's a paid vacation for many and then again next year with the with with the hod coming Absolutely. up and saying giving the similar request at all times yes. superb i think uh, you know by the conversation that has gone so far rather than relearning adi it should have been a master class in setting up a learning team in an organization that's how maybe a long title but yeah it it seems uh, pretty interesting but uh, and this has been great right uh, we we started of course with you know demystifying adi it's in itself and then how it is used in current scenario and then it went into why it, it's it's a beautiful tool which should not be used only and only for a project but actually it can define learning in an organization that's 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 the biggest takeaway and you've you've given so many yeah. examples that you know i even if someone is an aspirational uh, learning enthusiast something someone like me if he listens to this and you know uh, catches up with you should be a good setup to you know uh, institu- institutionalize this and use it for uh, better for any organization and for himself as well so thank you for doing this neeraj yeah well, thanks thanks tran i get into this next segment with your permission which which has some personal questions i hope that's okay with you yeah yeah i'm okay and these are the rapid as, fire as I, say, you know, as, yeah. as i always say my life is like an open book uh, however the reality is you need to read it so <laughs> so ask me questions no issues all right but th- these are supposed to be rapid there is no hamper to be one here but yeah uh, the, the let let the response be really rapid okay okay and and uh, i know you have uh, so much experience so the first question is very close 
uh, what is the strangest or the weirdest thing you did while attending a meeting or a webinar? <laughs> um, no, I I don't think I have done anything strange or weird, but I have seen people doing uh, <laughs> okay. strange and innovative things. Hmm. Um, in fact, uh, my uh, daughter, she is a school going kid. Right. Uh, and uh, nowadays, you know that because of this COVID-19 pandemic scenario, all the schools are happening online in an online Correct. fashion. No, now not all students are very sincere ones. Right. Uh, I, I never was during my school days. So, uh, and she's my daughter. So, uh, but she was, she was showing me one extremely innovative, extremely creative brain uh, of one of the students. You know what okay. he would have done. Uh -huh. He actually created a video of himself <laughs> for about five minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, as if he's paying attention. So all, all his postures, different uh, postures, Styles, huh? uh, different head positions, um, everything very clearly uh, showing as if he's paying attention attentive. and he is there, you know, attentive. So he created that five minute <laughs> video. Okay. And then when they are going through their class on Zoom, you know, Zoom has that uh, virtual background option. Right. Right. <laughs> In that virtual background, you can also put a video. Interesting. So he put that video over there and then he was ready to do whatever he wanted to do. <laughs> what the class is, is going on. He was a, doing whatever he wanted. He is a genius. And what age is that? Uh, 13, 13, oh, one, three. See, this is how, this is how, so movies, are, movies have taught us so much, right? And yeah. it's, this is straight from a movie, but thanks. And this, this seems to be a very recent one, right? So that's where you, yeah. you, you you've got this. Time. And um, second one, what era suits you the most? And would you go there this, if, if time travel is possible? Um, 60s? 60s. I would love to go back. Yeah, 60s. Very unusual time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I find it uh, rather... Uh, okay. I find it extremely um, attractive era, you know. And there are a number of reasons for that. Um, I guess the world wasn't as crowded as it is. Correct. You know, for sure. Then. Uh, cities in India, uh, you can actually see roads in Mumbai, which are empty roads. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you could see trams, you could see double deckers uh, plying on the roads. Right. Um, so on, on one side, it was that the, if you look at music, music was at its best, whether it is Hindi film music, whether it is uh, Western music, so many different musical forms came into being. Uh, the rock, hard rock, everything yeah. became popular, you know, during, during this time. This was also the time when the world was okay with experimenting with number of things. You know, okay. political correctness hadn't become a buzzword. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. The, the, the world was much more tolerant in nature. Ah, okay. So, yeah, the world was much more tolerant in nature. And, uh, and one of the most important thing is, I think people were rich, even if they didn't have as much money. Okay. So in terms of their knowledge, in terms of their reading, in terms of music, in terms of films, in terms of acting, in terms of cricket or sports, the class. So all the classical elements that you see, everything yeah. you can get to 1960s. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The next one I cannot imagine. If, if Neeraj was not a learning and development professional, what would he be? Um, I would either be an actor or a cricketer. Actor or a cricketer. I know this part, but no, yeah, but sure. For my listeners, but for my listeners, just elaborate that. But mostly an actor. Um, I actually wanted to be an actor. Okay. You know, um, however, uh, I was uh, cajoled. I was counselled by various people. And so cajoled, counseled, and then threatened. So, you know, in, in, in that way. Um, 
so yeah but eventually it didn't happen um, so i uh, although i have acted on stage uh, i have acted with the uh, pretty big people um, i also was selected for um, one of the television series uh, i have couple of relatives who are extremely successful in um, you know in, uh, in this domain the, uh, stage as well as uh, film domain okay uh, so i i actually wanted to do that um, i i wanted to become an actor i wanted to become a hero and of course all the other uh, temptations that uh, you know that you or the glamour that you see Right. Uh, about the actors and all that obviously was a temptation no two ways about it but i think i was good at acting so uh, i wanted to be that okay uh, couldn't didn't and uh, <laughs> then uh, then yeah eventually uh, career wise if you look at it one point in time it had also struck me to become a lawyer okay um because uh, i used rather during my school and college days i was a public speaker Uh, i participated in a lot of elocution and debating competitions one lot of debating competitions um, and so i thought that i have gift of gab why not become a lawyer you know okay um, but then i also realized that after graduation i will need to study for three more years to become a lawyer so i said <laughs> forget it um, then uh, so yeah so that's where those uh, aspirations they just simply went away then i started my career in sales uh-huh. uh, again because of the same thing i thought that i have gift of gap i can speak what what better yeah. approach than sales yeah so did that for about 8 years and then uh, one fine day or not so fine day my boss called me in, when i was addressing a group mm. of people and i was training them for some of the tasks and my boss called me inside he said neeraj accept one thing for yourself you are good for nothing you <laughs> might as well go into it. so so that's how <laughs> in long back in 1994 i uh, decided to uh, make an effort in learning rather at that time we used to call it training and development correct so that do so that's how and i have no qualms about it because as they usually say uh, you know uh, there is there is a beautiful english adage which says those who can they do they do those who can't they teach <laughs> i teach <laughs> okay so th- thank you for that answer <laughs> interesting okay superb and the last question uh, what has neeraj relearned about himself or relearned in general um every time i conduct a training program on any topic prashant i uh-huh. relearn that topic okay uh, you I- even in my introduction you mentioned it i am rather i am influenced i am rather i am trained i am influenced by dr steven covey to a great extent right okay uh, in my professional life and uh, what uh, steven used to say i uh, it resonates with me a lot he said he used to say that if you want to learn something start teaching it when you start teaching you actually learn that topic the most interesting yeah so every time you are you are teaching any topic new insights new nuances new realizations keep on hitting you you know mm. and your learning starts becoming richer very interesting right so, so why do you think i started this podcast the title of the <laughs> podcast is my story so i really want to check what is that i can pick and what can i relearn but again thank you so much neeraj for doing this It means a lot and very soon we'll be doing some more of these you welcome prashant the pleasure has been all mine that was nothing less than a masterclass do review like share and subscribe to the relearning podcast and do reach out to us on the relearning podcast on facebook and instagram and relearn podcast on twitter until next time this is prashant taker keep relearning bye